What's up guys, my name is Tickno, here for Troubleshoots, and today I'm back with another Rust tutorial video. This one is specifically linked to game servers. Say that you have your Rust server and you try to connect to it, and you see an error like this. Disconnected wrong connection protocol, server update required. If I were to go to play game, search for the server, you'd see that it's not on the list anywhere. F1, try to connect to it directly, and it'll say disconnected, wrong connection, protocol, server update required. And that's exactly all we need to do to fix it. Today we'll be running through how to update your Rust server via game servers. So if you were to log into game servers, you'd see a page similar to this. Then after opening up game servers, all we need to do is find the correct server on the list over here and click on the mods tab in the very far right. Once we're here, we're going to have a look on this list over here for server update. Updates the server to the latest version and disables Oxide. Note that it says disables Oxide. We'll be re-enabling it once it's updated. So I'll go ahead and hit install. Then I'll hit OK. And the server will take a short while to update. This could be two minutes. This could be five. It just depends on how lucky we are with the server updating quickly. They say allow up to 15 minutes. So I'll go ahead and wait for this to complete. Having a look at the page over here, you might want to refresh it. A good way to see if your server actually restarts instead of refreshing the page and waiting for this little lock sign to disappear is to go ahead and check your Archon. So using this piece of software over here, which is linked down below, part of the series that I've been doing on this, at the bottom you can see it says disconnected from the server. If I try and connect, it'll just say connecting until it eventually works. And of course, if the server hasn't started up entirely, then this won't actually connect. So it's a super simple way of continuing to watch it. Or of course, you can just leave it and return at some stage in the future and refresh the game server's page. Refreshing yet again, you can see that it's finally online. From here, if we head into our console and we were to reconnect to the server, and if we were to run a command such as oxide.reload star, you'd see that absolutely nothing happens. Oxide.version returns nothing. So that means that Oxide is currently disabled and it's not in fact working. Heading into FileZilla, if I were to go into Rust Dedicated Data Managed, you'll see that the Oxide plugins over here are still here. They're just not working. That's because a couple of the files that it replaces to get Oxide to work and hook into the actual server itself have been replaced during the update. If I sort by last modified, you can see that these files down here were all updated today, which is the 21st. These first two over here, I'm pretty sure, are included with the download for Oxide. That being said, we need to go ahead and re-enable Oxide. How exactly do we do that? Well, heading back to game servers, we'll head into the mods tab, and then we'll simply look for Oxide 2. Automatically retrieves the latest version of Oxide 2 and installs it to your server. We'll hit the install button. OK, and now we simply just need to wait for the server to actually update. And the same thing will happen where it goes offline for a while and the server restarts. So now we need to wait another short while and they'll get back to you once it's fully updated. And there we have it. After another refresh, the server is running. All we need to do is head back into our Archon to make sure that everything is working. So heading back to Archon, you can see it's connected yet again. And you can see over here that it's calling some of the plugins, Rust IO, Discord extension, etc., etc. Running oxide.version will tell us the version of Oxide, so it is currently working yet again. So anyways, that has been how to update your Rust server using game servers. I hope this tutorial helped you because the tutorial on their website helps quite a bit under the FAQ, but A, it's super hidden underneath everything, plus a login wall, so Google searching for the answer will not lead you to the answer. Hopefully it'll lead you to this video now because this video explains it. However, before this point, it's been pretty difficult to understand, and especially if you do look at the FAQ, all it really says is you can update it, but it doesn't tell you how to re-enable Oxide once it's been disabled. So anyways, I hope this video clears up a couple of issues that you guys might have been having. My name is Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!